Come on, where could it be? Come on, wait. My God, it can't be. This thing will fetch a fortune on the open market. But what if I opened it myself? Who knows what kind of mysteries could be inside? Ah, I can't stand this. I need to know. It's a message. What could this mean? What could this possibly mean? Ugh. Hey everybody, we have now arrived at the point during the year when everybody gets free stuff, although everybody is also expected to buy more things so it all evens out in the end. Despite this, Christmas is by far my favorite holiday, but I never really knew how it actually got started. I did a little research and now I am ready to tell you a story about the history of Christmas. Sit tight because this one's a little more complicated than Halloween. The exact origins of Christmas have not been completely pinned down, but it is known that thousands of years ago, many ancient European cultures celebrated the winter solstice with feasts and celebrations and so on. Most notable of these was the ancient Nordic festival called Yule, which recognized the darkest day of the year as the return of the sun. To commemorate this event, the Norse would go out and gather logs, which they would then, of course, set on fire. The Norse would feast until the logs burned out completely, which could reportedly take up to 12 days. They believed that every spark from the burning log represented a pig or cow that would be born within the next year. Similar festivities were enjoyed throughout the northern regions. The primary reason for the abundance of winter feasting was that most of the livestock were slaughtered before winter, and most of the alcohol was ready to drink by that time. In other words, they had a lot of food, a lot of booze, and not much else to do. Meanwhile, in Rome, which I now recognize as the country which had a holiday for everything, they were, of course, celebrating several different holidays during the last few weeks of the year. Among these were the celebration of the birth of Mithra, the god of the sun, the festival of Juvenalia, a celebration of children, and the festival of Saturnalia, which was really weird and I'm not going to try to explain it. Interestingly, the birth of Mithra took place on December 25th and was considered a very sacred day. Alright, now that we have that out of the way, we move on to the Jesus segment of the show. Originally, Christians did not celebrate Jesus' birth, instead primarily commemorating Easter, the day on which Jesus rose from the grave. Around 400 AD, the church decided that the birth of Jesus should be a holiday. Everyone was okay with this, but there was one problem. Nobody really knew when Jesus was actually born. The Bible seemed to indicate it was somewhere in the spring, but Pope Julius I was just like, eh, whatever, and then he chose December 25th. It is generally believed that he chose this date so that Christmas could sort of absorb Saturnalia and the other solstice celebrations the same way that All Souls Day took over Samhain. At this point, Christmas was officially born, although it was called the Feast of the Nativity for a few hundred years. A little before the turn of the first millennium, Christmas had spread throughout the Christian lands, which at this point was pretty much the entirety of Europe. Everybody agreed that it should be celebrated on December 25th, but there was a bit of a disagreement. You see, the Catholic Church and most other Western Christian churches use the Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar most commonly used today. However, most Eastern churches, including the Greek and Russian Orthodox churches, use the Julian calendar, which is pretty much the same thing, only 13 days behind. So essentially, Greek and Russian Orthodox churches celebrate their own version of Christmas, which I always knew as Slavic, but is probably called something else, around January 7th, although the celebration goes on for several days after that point. The idea of replacing the winter solstice festivals with Christmas was largely successful, but it had the unintended consequence of turning Christmas into a festival quite similar to the ones it was replacing. For several hundred years, Christmas consisted mostly of going to church, getting drunk and partying, and giving food and entertainment to homeless people for some reason. However, 
This age of Christmas eventually came to an end during the Puritan Reformation of England in the 1600s. The Puritans viewed Christmas as unnecessarily decadent, and to be fair, it kind of was at that point, and so they forbade citizens from participating in Christmas festivities. Eventually, Christmas came back when Charles II returned to the throne. However, by this point, colonists had already arrived in America, and they had brought with them the idea of Christmas, although it was only celebrated in certain settlements. Christmas slowly decreased in popularity in America following the Revolutionary War. However, Christmas would see a miraculous revival in the 1800s. At this time, the Christmas season was known for gang rioting and general misbehavior. This inspired many to try changing the fundamental way that Christmas was celebrated. In the early 1800s, Washington Irving wrote The Sketchbook of Joffrey Crayon, which described a peaceful and agreeable Christmas in which everybody got along, which at the time was unheard of. Irving also included in the book a number of quote-unquote ancient customs, which historians generally agree were just random things that Irving made up. Around this same time, Charles Dickens wrote his now-famous Christmas Carol, which further reinforced the image of Christmas as a season of kindness and goodwill. Thanks in part to these books, Christmas evolved once more into the form we are most familiar with today. Since Christmas was declared an official holiday in 1870, the United States in particular has developed its own unique brand of Christmas, which combines a number of elements from numerous Christmas variations. Moving on to what is possibly the most iconic symbol of modern Christmas, we now arrive at the origins of Santa Claus himself. Santa's origins can be traced back to a Turkish monk named Saint Nicholas, who was born somewhere around 280 AD and became famous for giving away all of his money and traveling around the country helping people. Nicholas was known as the patron saint of children and sailors. In late 18th century New York, Dutch families held a celebration devoted to Sint Nicolas, as he was called, which was often abbreviated to Sinterklaas, believed to be the source of Santa's name. In 1822, a minister named Clement Clark Moore wrote an account of a visit from St. Nicholas, in which Santa was first depicted as an old man who delivers toys from a flying sleigh driven by reindeer. And in 1881, political cartoonist Thomas Nast created the first contemporary depiction of Santa Claus as an old man with a white beard dressed in his iconic suit. Oh, and then Coca-Cola used Santa to advertise their soda for 80 years. And thus, after a long and bizarre evolution, Christmas ended up where it is today. Good night, everybody, and Merry Christmas.